Welcome to 123 Radiology Channel. Now, in this lecture, we are going to review ultrasound features of diffuse liver diseases. We're going to discuss the ultrasound features of acute hepatitis, fatty liver disease, liver cirrhosis, passive liver congestion, and Budd-Chiari syndrome. Okay, let's start with acute hepatitis. In acute hepatitis, there is diffuse swelling of the hepatocytes, proliferation of Kupfer cells, and infiltration of the portal areas by lymphocytes and monocytes. The sonographic features parallel the histologic findings. In most patients, the liver appears normal. Hepatomegaly is seen in many cases. Thickening of the gallbladder wall occurs in up to 80% of acute hepatitis, particularly in viral hepatitis, as you can see in this case. It occurs due to hypoalbuminemia that generates gallbladder wall edema. Periportal lymph adenopathy can be seen in patients with acute hepatitis, particularly in viral hepatitis, as you can see in this case. The liver parenchyma may show diffuse hypoecogenicity with accentuated brightness of the portal triads or periportal cuffing. This appearance is called starry sky appearance. Starry sky appearance is nonspecific, but most commonly associated with hepatitis. It has poor sensitivity and specificity. Okay, let's discuss fatty liver. Sonographic features of fatty infiltration depends on the amount of fatty deposition and whether it is diffuse or focal. The key sonographic feature of diffuse fatty infiltration is diffuse increased echogenicity of the liver parenchyma and decreased acoustic penetration. Hepatomegaly may be present. As you can see on the image on your right hand, this is a normal liver. You can see the liver is isoechoic to the renal cortex. On the image on your left hand, the liver shows diffuse fatty changes, manifested by diffuse increased parenchymal echogenicity, as compared to the renal cortex. There is decreased acoustic penetration, with slightly impaired visualization of diaphragm, as the red arrow pointing. Visualization of the normal bright intrahepatic vessel walls diminishes in fatty liver because the surrounding liver tissue becomes more hyperechoic. Looking at these two images, in the normal liver we can see the echogenic vessel walls. In fatty liver the echogenic vessel walls are not visualized due to increased echogenicity of the surrounding liver parenchyma. Depending on the severity of fatty deposition, a subjective and semi-quantitative grading of the fatty liver can be made, ranging from mild to severe. In mild fatty infiltration, there is mild diffuse increased hepatic echogenicity, with normal visualization of diaphragm and intrahepatic vessel borders, as you can see in this case. In moderate fatty infiltration, there is moderate diffuse increased hepatic echogenicity, with slightly impaired visualization of intrahepatic vessels and diaphragm. In severe fatty infiltration, there is marked increased echogenicity. With poor penetration of posterior segments of right lobe of liver, and poor or no visualization of hepatic vessels and diaphragm. As you can see in this case, the posterior segment of the right lobe and the diaphragm are not visualized. Special attention should be given to patients with severe fatty liver. In these cases, focal hepatic lesions are difficult to visualize due to posterior attenuation. And CT is recommended for solving unclear cases. Although the process of fatty infiltration is usually diffuse, fatty deposition or fatty sparing may be focal, resembling a mass. Focal fatty infiltration is hyperechoic area in a liver with normal echogenicity. While focal fatty sparing is hypoechoic area in a hyperechoic liver. Focal fatty changes is usually seen in characteristic locations. 
A typical common site of focal hepatic changes is the gallbladder fossa. As you can see in this case, the liver shows diffuse increased echogenicity of fatty infiltration with hypoechoic area at the gallbladder fossa, representing focal fatty sparing. Another typical site of focal fatty changes is anterior to the porta hepatis, as seen in this case. It can also be seen near the falciform ligament or in the subcapsular parenchyma, as you can see in this case. Or it can be seen in the caudate lobe as in this case. Focal fatty changes may mimic a focal neoplastic lesion, however, ultrasound characteristics of focal fatty pattern may differentiate the two entities. Focal fatty changes have characteristic locations as previously described. There is lack of mass effect, and hepatic vessels are not displaced. Focal fatty changes also have geographic margins. However, it may appear round or interdigitating with normal tissue. As you can see in this case, there is an area of focal fatty infiltration in the right hepatic lobe. It is seen in the subcapsular parenchyma and showing geographic margins. A hepatic vein is seen passing through it, with no mass effect. Most cases of fatty liver changes are of the diffuse type. However, segmental and lober distribution has been reported, as you can see in these two cases. Okay, let's discuss ultrasound features of liver cirrhosis. Liver cirrhosis is a diffuse process characterized by fibrosis, and the conversion of normal liver architecture into structurally abnormal nodules. Three pathologic processes leads to cirrhosis. Cell death, fibrosis, and regeneration. The sonographic features of cirrhosis vary during the course of the disease. Early cirrhotic changes include hepatomegaly and possible textural changes. These imaging features alone are nonspecific, and unreliable in detecting early histologic changes of cirrhosis. With superimposed fatty infiltration, the parenchymal echogenicity increased, as compared to the normal renal cortex. More specific ultrasound features of cirrhosis are seen with late disease. One of these features is volume redistribution. In early stages of cirrhosis, the liver may be enlarged. However, in advanced stages, the liver is often small, with relative enlargement of the caudate and left lobes compared to the right lobe. The ratio of the caudate lobe width to the right lobe width is an indicator of cirrhosis. A ratio of 0.65 is considered indicative of cirrhosis. However, volume redistribution is seen also in patients with Budkyrie syndrome. Irregular hepatic surface is a sign of cirrhosis. It is easily identified in the presence of perihepatic ascites, as seen in this case. Surface irregularity is due to the presence of regenerating nodules and fibrosis. In absence of ascites, the liver surface is difficult to assess. However, this can be facilitated by using high-frequency transducer as seen in the images on the right side of the screen. Coarse hepatic echotexture is seen in liver cirrhosis due to fibrosis and regenerating nodules. Special attention should be given to highly heterogeneous liver structure, particularly if this heterogeneity is limited to certain areas. In these conditions the presence of a diffuse hepatocellular carcinoma should be suspected and further evaluation by CT or MRI is recommended. Regenerating nodules are regenerating hepatocytes surrounded by fibrotic septae. On ultrasound, regenerating nodules are isoechoic or hypoechoic with a thin echogenic border that corresponding to fibrofatty connective tissue. A frequent sign in liver cirrhosis is the thickening of the gallbladder wall due to edema, secondary to hypoalbuminemia, portal hypertension and lymphatic stasis. 
In cases of liver cirrhosis, the gallbladder wall thickness can reach up to 10 millimeters. In advanced liver cirrhosis and as a result of fibrosis, the portal circulation resistance is increased. This results in portal hypertension. One of the first signs of portal hypertension in ultrasound is the increased diameter of the portal vein greater than 13 millimeters with lack of respiratory variation. Other signs of portal hypertension are dilated portosystemic venous collaterals. The dilated collaterals can be seen on sonography at the perispalmic region and around the gallbladder. On ultrasound, collaterals appear as multiple anechoic structures that communicate with each other. On color Doppler examination they show venous flow. Recanalization of the umbilical vein is a sign of severe portal hypertension. It can be found in 10 to 20 percent of cases of advanced liver cirrhosis. Recanalized umbilical vein can be traced starting from the left branch of the portal vein, continuing to the abdominal wall, downwards towards the umbilicus. Splenomegaly is frequently seen in cases of liver cirrhosis. It is seen in approximately 80% of the cases. In these patients, splenomegaly is frequently exceeding 15 cm in bipolar diameter. Ascites is frequently encountered in patients with decompensated liver cirrhosis. And ultrasound is a very sensitive method to detect ascites. Passive hepatic congestion is passive edema of the liver secondary to vascular stasis as a complication related to heart failure. In the early stage, the liver is enlarged, causing right upper quadrant discomfort. Ultrasound signs are dilated hepatic veins and dilated inferior vena cava. The dilated hepatic veins are well visible up to the periphery of the liver. The hepatic vein diameter can be measured 2 cm from the junction with the inferior vena cava. A diameter larger than 10 mm is considered abnormal. On Doppler examination, there is loss of normal respiratory variability of the hepatic veins. Another ultrasound sign of heart failure is the presence of ascites in variable amount. The presence of pleural effusion is also relatively frequent in patients with heart failure. bud Chiari syndrome is a rare cause of portal hypertension and liver failure. The disease is characterized by impaired hepatic venous drainage. The causative lesion can be located at any portion, from the hepatic veins, to the upper portion of the inferior vena cava. bud Chiari syndrome is commonly classified into primary and secondary. Primary bud Chiari syndrome is caused by venous obstruction that is mostly due to hepatic vein thrombosis and less frequently due to hepatic vein stenosis. Secondary bud Chiari syndrome is caused by hepatic vein obstruction due to external compression by a tumor or by an infectious process. Hepatic venous obstruction causes elevated sinusoidal pressure and liver congestion. When hepatic venous obstruction develops in more than one hepatic vein, at different time intervals, atrophic liver segments can be found adjacent to hypertrophic segments. The presence of atrophic and hypertrophic hepatic segments is called hepatic dysmorphism. The most characteristic feature of hepatic dysmorphism is irregular liver contour. Ultrasound features of bud Chiari syndrome is classified into direct signs, including hepatic vein thrombosis and hepatic vein stenosis. And indirect signs, including parenchymal changes, morphologic changes, regenerating nodules, portal hypertension, intra- and extra-hepatic collaterals. Hepatic vein thrombosis can be total or partial, focal or extensive, and may involve one or more hepatic veins. On ultrasound, acute thrombosis is hypoechoic, 
and associated with expansion of the vessel lumen. On color Doppler ultrasound, no flow seen in the thrombose segment. In chronic stage, thrombosed hepatic vein results in formation of a hyperechoic fibrotic cord, as seen in this image. Hepatic vein stenosis is less common than thrombosis. Like thrombosis, stenosis can involve one or several hepatic veins. It may be focal or diffuse, partial or complete, and most commonly affect the osteal segments of hepatic veins. On color Doppler ultrasound, stenosis manifested by aliasing effect and turbulent flow, with loss of the normal triphasic cardiac modulation as you can see in this image. During the early stage of the disease, venous congestion is evident, resulting in a hyperechoic appearance of the liver on ultrasound. Later on, in chronic stage of disease, in addition to the hepatic congestion, fibrosis is present and leading to cirrhosis. In Bud Kairi syndrome, the liver undergoes morphologic changes during the course of the disease. In the acute stage, the liver is enlarged with homogeneous echo pattern and a smooth contour. During chronic stage, atrophic and hypertrophic areas may coexist, giving a dysmorphic appearance of the liver with irregular margins. Areas that have been affected become atrophic, while healthy areas undergo compensatory hypertrophy. Caudate lobe hypertrophy is a frequently noted morphological sign in Bud Kyrie syndrome. Regenerating nodules are the hallmark of chronic Bud Kyrie syndrome. They are commonly multiple and variable in size. On ultrasound, regenerating nodules may be hypo or hyperechoic, as seen on this image. Other indirect signs of Bud Kyrie syndrome are intra- and extrahepatic collateral vessels. The development of intrahepatic collaterals allows draining venous blood from the obstructed areas to preserved areas of the liver to the upper portion of the inferior vena cava. In addition to cavocaval collaterals that characterize Bud Kyrie syndrome, portosystemic collaterals may occur similar to those seen in portal hypertension. In acute stage, there is ascites and reverse portal blood flow. However, in chronic stage of the disease, splenomegaly is a common finding, with reverse portal blood flow. Thank you very much for your attention.